welcome into the podcast. Uh, Keith, how are you doing, man? We have got an exciting topic list of things to cover today that I, I cannot wait to dive into. How are you doing? I'm great. Hey, I really like your hat. That's a really cool hat. Yeah, Where'd I you, like yours. I like yours, too. Where'd man. you get that hat? SEMA? SEMA. What's Ooh, that? You know, Is that like a sewing supply store? Yeah, sewing everything uh, on a mannequin. How, how do you spell it? Association. I'm asking the tough questions today. How do you spell SEMA? Yeah. Uh, if it's the sewing side of the club, it's S E A M A, but uh, seam like sewing. Yeah, seam, I got you. Seam stress. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Nah, nah. Uh, S E M A is Special Equipment Manufacturers Association. It's oh, great. wow! Uh, yeah, already, already yeah. learned something. Okay, so yeah. um, the SEMA show. Yes. You got that? You got the hat from the SEMA show we just got back from. It yeah, says, yeah. "Oops, well, other so, side, ni- 2019, right? We, we, yep, 2000, yeah, 2009, Las Vegas, 2019. Can you so see mine? I can. Yeah, you got the perfect angle there. So, got um, the, uh, you got Pennzoil, all the Quaker, Quaker State, State Pennzoil logos on the side. Yep, yep, yep. yep. And then up here, it's it's SEMA 2019 that's, that's, or something. Yeah, it's uh, oh, I don't know. I can't. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Anyway, these are it's, these are cool. They they like yeah. I'm 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 pretty particular on." Free swag. These are, yeah. So okay. So today we're talking about last week's visit to the SEMA show. We were there all week. We went to Apex as well. Tons of stuff to talk about. Um, Man, we have got all kinds of video content on our website, on our YouTube channel. We're cranking it out by the day. There's still more coming. Um, there, there was literally more to see at this show than. We had time to see that any one human huh. being on planet Earth could make. I mean, it's with the number of like halls that they keep adding and outside tent areas and stuff. It's it's massive, man. I um I've I've never seen um such a sea of human beings. <laughs> yeah, sometimes not uh, that, in a good way. Oh man, that that flow of people into the SEMA show that first day. So let's let's. That, it was a huge crowd, no doubt about it. But I was even impressed. We we were because we were media. Um, we had the special invite to a uh, vehicle release, um, special vehicle release by GM, um, as well as Ford uh, earlier. Um, but they had a nice little reception for the media types. They had a live band. They fed us. Uh, hey, don't forget. Beer, beer. Free beer. Free beer. Free beer and ice cream, man, and cookies even. So, hey, before we get... I, I, I promised to do this a couple podcasts back, and it's sitting here getting warm, so I got to do this. Um, yeah. And Stone keeps coming up for some reason between us. We had Stone on our previous podcast, I think, mm-hmm. sitting at mm-hmm. Apex, or right. one of the two Apexes. So... Um, I'm not a big chocolate guy. Like, I don't eat a lot of chocolate. I just not, I know, I'm a little weird, but I don't love chocolate like a lot of people love chocolate. But Mm -hmm. I do love Southwest food, and there is a Southwest, there's a chocolate company here in Nashville Mm -hmm. called uh, Olive and St. Clair, and they make a chocolate bar... And it's cinnamon chili. It's a they they've re, they've repackaged it. It's the same chocolate they used to call it southwestern style chocolate. Mm-hmm. This is what it looks like. If you're watching on YouTube, this is what it looks like. Okay, and again, this is artisan uh, chocolate made uh, by Olive St. Clair, Olive and St. Clair out of Nashville. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, you can find these usually nicer convenience stores and whatnot. And I say that because that is fantastic. And Stone makes a beer called Choco Vesa. There it is. Mm-hmm. And it mm-hmm. tastes just like that Olive and St. Clair chocolate. Now, this has a little bit of coffee in it, too. Well, that, that makes sense. Here's a question for you, though. How well balanced is the, 
is the the heat spiciness to the it's chocolate? It's not so you, overbearing, and yeah. So, uh, so you get the so you get the heat. Yeah, a little bit, just for a, a little minute, bit. Yeah, right on the back end. Yep. Okay, yep. and then so the chocolate kind of it, it. Oh, look at you, man! Wow. Uh, you know, I guess I could. I know all you haters yeah. out there. I know I'm not pouring it right. I'm doing a freaking podcast. I only have so many hands. Calm down, people. <laughs> look at you and your Batman. Uh, oh yeah. People, look. You know, for those of you who are not watching this and you're listening, Why I gotta not? tell you, you know, Why not? This, Why exactly, are you not watching? You know, yeah, you, you should be watching. You can watch these things over all on right. our YouTube channel. So, so I kind of screwed that up. It it's got way too much head on it. But that's okay. That's all right. Anyway, but I tell you, I'm, it's I'm, really good stuff. I'll we'll get. I'll tell you in a minute when I hit it. But um, yeah. So I'm sure it's great. So quick second. Um, video podcast on YouTube. Search for the Parts Counter Guru since you mentioned that, Jay. Um, A little bit of a change. We were doing both an audio video podcast on Apple. To be honest with you, it was kind of a logistical mess. And so we've gone to audio only on all the traditional podcast platforms like Apple and uh, Google Podcasts and Stitcher and TuneIn and all that. And then if you want to watch the video side, go over to YouTube. We're still putting it there. It'll, It'll continue to be there. Um, it, these podcasts were typically over an hour and it was just, it, it was a lot to, to take that video and put it in two different locations. And we thought, you know what, we're kind of pushing everybody to watch our stuff on YouTube anyway. So let's just, yeah, it yeah. just makes sense. I think, and the majority of our, of our listeners, our subscribers that I've talked to, um, some do, they will watch it after they've listened to it. They yeah. prefer to listen to it because it gives them that opportunity in their car or whatever yeah, they're driving and to work, or, or if they're out on a run or something. That's great. Right. I, I prefer that as well. But, you know, look, folks, you know, to remind you again that if you are going to be over on YouTube to watch our podcast and our short videos that we put out, and trust me, you're going to want to start. If, if you're listening to this podcast right now and you haven't gone to our YouTube channel, please do go over there and subscribe ring that bell so you get those notifications when we put something out there and then also give it a thumbs up on the like because all of those things it helps us um keep keep doing these things so you know i always say it keith likes this is that you know these 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 subscriptions are free to you but they're priceless to us and it's it is the truth uh we have a goal uh we met a goal while we were in las vegas and we're going to continue to set goals for ourselves and we cannot do this without you guys um, okay, so back to Las Vegas because I pulled you off to that like three minutes, That's four okay. minutes ago. That's okay. That's quite all right. Uh, we started out with a couple press events on Monday night, and uh, mm-hmm. you know Ford and GM and um, GM's big thing was they just, I mean, really I don't want to, uh, they just sort of wheeled a convertible Corvette C8 up and, uh, and went, hey yeah. everybody, looky. Really like we had been all over that kind of before, so it was less of a big deal back. to us. Uh, if you have not seen our video on that, we we got some uh, inside the the car footage in those cars, and that's on our YouTube channel as well as our website. Yeah, yeah you should check that out. It, it's a good looking car. I mean, I was you know. Yeah, it was great. I mean, but it was kind of a you know, for me it was it wasn't new. It wasn't like some, I, you know I totally expected to have something new there. But that what they did reveal though, and oddly enough, they didn't put it on the main stage was the C8R. The, yeah, the racing. Yeah, it was yeah, I mean, just sort of like, hey, everybody, we got a, you know, yeah, that thing is, yeah. It's pretty nice, but you couldn't see it. It was, right. they were, you know, it was hidden behind the crowds well, of they people. Brought, and they brought up one, and and they, they had sort of a, a ramp that had, you know, it was perched pretty high at eye level, or it was above mm-hmm. eye level. Yeah. And then and then they brought, uh, they had a, a another uh, drive-on area parallel to it, but it was down low. Well, mm-hmm. you, they pulled it right in front of the press box, and it was down so low, all we could barely see was the roof of the thing. And we're like, well, there's not going to be any press shots of this thing because <laughs> all you're going to you see, it's going to look like a drone shot. I'm standing on top of the car yeah. looking down. Yeah, yeah so... And, and I, I would have liked to have known how we could have gotten down into the um, the VIP area um, because those look like... That's what those were, where those folks right, were sitting. Right, right. Um, but we had a great vantage point yeah. where we were at to see the thing. It's just that they didn't put – they just didn't – I thought it was – It was. I was not happy that I couldn't really see the, the C8R. Yeah. Period. Well, period. I mean, I was I was disappointed. The other – the other the the, uh, the Stingray um, uh, convertible, it's a beautiful car, but I'd already seen one. Right. You know, so. 
Yeah. And you know what? I, I heard something that we're only assuming that the C8s that we've seen travel around out there on these tours is exactly what the production models are going to look like. I've, I've heard that you, you, you kind of have to take it with a little bit of a grain of salt because they may get into production and realize, well, we're going to have to cut a corner here to make the production time. Um, so don't be surprised if some of the C8s, those of you who have ordered one, um, to to you know you might you might take a look at it and go you know make sure it's it looks like what they said it was going to look like, but don't be surprised if it doesn't. I mean, it's not going to change dramatically, but there is that possibility that a fascia um, angle or something like that might be slightly different, or a taillight molding or something. So okay, so that so on that note. Um, let's talk about the Toyota press release for a minute. Yeah, and the yeah. Supra, Supra thing. So Supra. So we did a Supra. we did a pot. Su- yeah, yeah. The, the reason Jay's doing that is because <laughs> it was just nothing but Supra, Super, Super, Super. So we did a podcast uh, earlier this year from Charlotte uh, NASCAR, Charlotte Motor Speedway, and mm-hmm. the, they were using Supras as the pace car. And then we talked to a guy at SEMA that had a Supra. And he had the models out, you know, the booth girls, and they were posing around it. And we talked to him about it, and I said, you know, how long have you had this? And he went, well, uh, I've had it a couple months, but we had to get on an early, almost like a prototype kind of order thing. Well, now they're rolling them out in full. And so Toyota mm-hmm. gives this press release. And you have to understand, folks, like when, when media gets an announcement, like from Toyota that says, or Ford, and it, it says, we're giving a press event. Uh, Tuesday morning from 10 a.m. to 10:20 at this location. That's right. it. That's a, that's all they tell us. We don't know what it's going to be about. We don't yeah. know anything other than go find Toyota at their address and you know. That's exactly right. I mean, and we didn't know what to expect. So so they brought Rutledge Wood out and they, I want to say it was like 10 Supras and they just kept going. Look at this one over here and look at that one over there and ooh, what's mm-hmm. this one? And they had this huge. Mm-hmm floor space and it was just super is parked everywhere they are now available like to purchase but there have been some comments from some guys like the guy we were talking about that had an early order that there's been some minor changes going on in these things yes and yes. you know what's even more interesting to me than that is i would say 50 percent of this show focused on either trucks off-road vehicles um four-wheel drive vehicles Mm -hmm. overland vehicles uh Mm -hmm. the overland lifestyle i mean are you guys getting the picture big giant 28 inch wheels giant tires right just amazing yeah off-road stuff right yeah i mean i could i could i could literally i mean they're just everywhere and i could literally walk under some of these rigs they're so big so clearly the trend is off-road right yeah Yeah. why in the world actually let me phrase this another way top two car manufacturers in the united states jay known for off-road vehicles go um top two manufacturers known for off-road vehicles off-road known for off-road uh well jeep and toyota toyota I, i didn't I didn't. Nissan? I didn't. Did we discuss this before the show? No. Okay. No. Jeep. Those Toyota, are the, those are the two. Okay. Yeah. So so Toyota is one of those two, right? Yeah. In the official Toyota booth. Yeah. How many off road vehicles Not, did you see? There were zero. It was all about the Supers. It was now, all about let me the just, Supers. Let me just recap what I just said. Half yeah. the show off road vehicles. Mm hmm. Clearly, yeah. there's an interest there, right? Absolutely. In fact, there there's is. a guy we met. He's got a cool story driving a Toyota. It was pretty badass what what he went through with that with that uh, i think it was a tundra it was a tundra and um, where, and toyota was kind of involved in that but in the official toyota appearance at sema hey everybody we got a super over here we got a super over there uh there's a super back there oh there's this really cool wasabi green supra you guys should check out yeah and then the red one and then the red one. Nice. Oh, and then rutledge yeah. wood he designed one Oh, and by the way, Daryl Walsh, not not Daryl Walsh, but Michael Waltrip's over here. Say hi to Michael, you know, and that sort of stuff. It's just, yeah, it was it was a lot of that. It was nothing. I think they super, missed the mark. 
I really do. I do as I do as well. And if you go, you know, we were saying that all day after that presser. We were because we were walking around the building, the show, and you look at all of these Overland, um, you know, rooftop uh, tents on all of these huge um, trucks, and there were Toyotas, Jeeps, and I lift mean, kits everywhere. Jeeps, Jeeps, lift kits everywhere, but there were some Toyotas there. Um, oh yeah, not, Forerunners, old FJ forties. Yeah, uh, but but not not in a not to make a um, not to make a uh, not for Toyota. Lots of to make lots a, of Tacomas too, tacos, right? Like yeah. lots of tacos with snorkels and all the At, racks and the cool. Right, you know they're showing out their uh, their camping setups on the roof and their you but know they, but, extra gas. But they tanks. were only the, yeah they were only there though to show the those products, the de- not the actual those vehicle. products, yeah. not the actual vehicle, which is a shame. So yeah, Toyotas. I mean, the only time you saw Toyota in those halls was when it sort of felt um, like this was their first SEMA show. Yeah, it's kind of weird, wasn't it? Yeah, kind of weird. And I and you would think that now Jeep hit the mark. Yeah, I mean they, they. they, I mean you would have thought that you were at. Yeah, they had nothing but jeeps in the Mopar area, right? You would have exactly. You would have thought that you were at one of their plants. Yeah, there were that many jeeps in there, and I am not joking. Custom, like they had all their Mopar parts, and they were selling Mm -hmm. like T-shirts, and like it was like their, you know factory store at the at the manufacturing assembly plant and <laughs> that's right completely it's just, different uh in, mindset in terms of what they brought to the show absolutely no doubt about it um they jeep came prepared man they were all over the place they were um i walked out of there going man i you know that, that i might go consider buying a jeep man with all that but i'm still waiting on the bronco and, and we'll we'll get into that all right so before we um, move to bronco Yep. Let's just m- quickly mention uh, we're working on trying to get a story or get him as a guest on the podcast. Yes, yes. Um, tell him how. Tell him okay. how we how we happen. I will this, post though, which this is photo, kind of, which is kind of it's funny, a great really. photo. Okay, yeah. so at these events, and I go to a lot of motorcycle races, and you know NASCAR is really no different. They always mm-hmm. they always hire the models to come out and stand in the booth, and you know, and and we'll get to that a little later in the show because I. That, that sends such an odd message to me sometimes. But uh, they're very pretty women, o- often scantily clad. And <laughs> we struck up a conversation with a couple girls at, um, at a booth. And there was this really cool-looking truck uh, behind it that had been kind of melted in a fire. And I just had said to them, like, you know... Because I'm, I'm always looking for, like, the story, the conversation. You know, how many of these right. have you done? What's the weirdest thing you've ever seen? You know, do you travel around and, they, and do a lot of these shows? Yeah, and, and that in itself was a very interesting yeah, conversation. Yeah, we had a great conversation. And, and just, they were very forthright. Yeah, and, you know, um, uh, best thing, worst thing, kind of, you know. And, and typically, yeah. and they were like, yeah, these are a lot of fun, you know. And then yeah. I was like, well, hey, you know, in case we use some of this content, would you pose for a photo? And they were like, yeah, sure. Mm-hmm. And they come around in front of the table... And they didn't, like, a lot of times they'll come together and stand, you know, like lock arms or whatever. And for whatever reason, they didn't. And and it just, it's, it's I'm so glad they didn't. So they're standing on either side of sort of this table in front of it. And I line up the shot and I take the shot and I'm looking through the viewfinder. And there's this guy right in the middle behind them about 30 <laughs> feet. And he's going. Yeah. Yeah. Total <laughs> photo bombing, man. And it was it was perfect and i got the shot and i got him in the background and so then i went all right now i gotta meet this guy because that yeah well well that's what the ladies were saying you know you don't need to be talking to us you need to be talking to that guy right so we went um, back and talked to him um he's he's had some um very very close calls with the california wildfires this guy's Paradise, as a matter of fact, is where yeah, okay. Where that that's um, what he basically put Paradise on the map was was that fire, and that's this is where this event. Took he's place. a medical professional. I think he's a nurse. He drove in to try to help save some some to get some people well, out. Here's what here's here's the yeah the lowdown on that was is they and the story's out there. Uh, he's he's he works in intensive care. He's an intensive care nurse. Um, his name is um, Alan Pierce. Looks a little bit like Dave Grohl. 
Yeah, yeah, real cool guy. Yeah. But uh, he um, he he owns a Toyota Tundra, and they had a triage set out in the parking lot with patients and stuff. Well, all of a sudden the fire starts to take over even the triage out in the parking lot. So he literally runs into the you know into the fire Get in know, his truck. People gets in, in his, his truck. truck, getting getting people out of there. Um, didn't think he was going to make it out. I think. It, it, yeah, yeah. I mean, he the guy didn't think he was going to make it out, but he did. And, and so, um, so he brought this truck to the show. <laughs> yeah, and they 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 made him a new one. But they it, it, this is the whole story. I, I can't wait, Alan. If you're watching this, you come, please come be on the podcast and let's dig into this. Like, well, you know, he, he's yeah, he's a pretty can, humble guy. I don't want to you know push him to talk about right. anything. To, but that this whole I mean, if you just want to talk about how awesome your your Toyota is. That sucker was melted. <laughs> yes, it was and melted. He got it out the of paint, there. The paint on the sides were burnt. Mirrors, I mean, just the mirrors were just like mirrors oh. were all melted, <laughs> and and um, he he did make it out alive, man. And uh, uh, just a very humble guy. And um, I when I mentioned to him, I said, you know, gosh, man, thank you guys for what you do. And he goes, man, I'm not the hero. He goes, those firefighters. Yeah. I mean, he was just very. I, I heard he made, several remarks like that, and and yeah. yeah. So, but. Can I give him a shout out on his um, uh, yeah. his Instagram? You know, okay. So, so guys, honestly, so Alan, again, I'm looking at you, man. Look here, I, I know you 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 you've uh, talked to us. We asked you to check out our podcast and listen to our podcast. We want you on. I've reached out to you, so hopefully that'll happen. But uh, you can you can find him and follow him him on Instagram. It's uh, the underscore Pandra P A N D R A. Um, and that's at um, Instagram. He's got pictures of the truck, and there's some really cool yeah. stuff out there. Yeah, some check really cool him out. stuff. So, so, um, and and I'm just gonna say this this one last thing about that, um, because I was thinking about this. Mm -hmm. You know, people just kind of doing their job and trying to do the right thing, and you know, maybe just don't want to don't want you to make a big deal about them. And I understand that. And then I look at kind of what's going on in the world and everybody's sort of yelling at each other and there's all these political arguments and you know people can't treat each other with any decency and 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 i just feel like kids need to see this I, I, they just need to see this kind of stuff because uh, this is sort of what we we need this is this is what we need to teach i guess this is the this is just the way that we all need to try to be. It's just do the right just, thing. It's yeah. just it's a selfless act of of, yeah. of I mean to just be good I, to your, your your other human beings, man. I and wish just, there were more examples like this out there. Exactly. So, to, you know, look, to he, value life. He may not want know, people talking to him like he's a hero or whatever. I, 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 that's your consequence for doing the right thing, buddy. Sorry, man. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, well, he ended up getting a uh, a new. Uh, he got a new truck you know, out of it. Toy yeah, got a new truck yeah. out of it. Toyota, and then he got a few other additives. And when we get him on, we'll, we'll, yeah, yeah. we'll get into yeah, it a little yeah. bit deeper about the truck. And and he, you know, even before this happened, I mean, I've gone through and looked at some of the information. This guy is 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 a solid Toyota Tundra fan. Might even get into up, some rooftop camping conversations with him. Yeah, I mean, he upgraded. Can you tell his him Tundra? Eating? What are you having? Oh, you're having that chocolate. Oh man, you, you know, you I mean you really you, you got to tell me about these things. Well, great radio when you eat on in front of the microphone, I, man. I know it, but man, you're making me hungry. Don't you I know should that? have packed a lunch. All right. Yeah, yeah. So, all right. So Toyota Jeep. Yep. Um, yeah, Toyota Jeep Ford. So, okay, so now the next presser, the yeah. Ford. Right. You want to go into a little uh, bit of that. Yeah, I, I love this. Now, granted, again, you know, in the beginning, Keith was talking about you don't know what you're going to see. You have no idea. You don't know what. You just know that it's Ford. So it's going to be something to do with Ford. Um, and they schedule these things very closely together. So and we had to literally run from one side of the hall. Yeah, and dragging I'm like about, 10 pounds of camera gear. and. Yeah, I mean, this, this, this was, well, we'll get into that a little later, too. I mean, I, I, I think I lost some weight last week, man, but... Um, hey Jay, yeah. What did I call you during the show? Uh, mule. I introduced Jay to the concept of mule. Mule is the new guy for for those of you that yeah. don't know. The new guy See, with the backpack. You bring. Yeah, I, you, you tell the new, new guy to bring the backpack. You stuff right. all your heavy gear in his backpack. I, I'm the new guy in the sense that um, 
uh, we're both new at this podcasting stuff, but I'm, I'm the new guy in regards to the uh, photography and videography and, you know, what it takes to uh, – you know, so, so when I arrive in Vegas, I have a backpack and a carry-on bag with all my gear in it, right? And I had to go and get all of our credentials and get all that stuff out of the way, get checked into the hotel. And Keith lets me know he made it off the plane. He's getting on the shuttle and he's coming over. So I meet him out front of the hotel. He gets out of the van, shuttle, van, and um, he's got two bags on him there. And I'm like, oh, wow, that's not too bad. And he goes, no, 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 no. Hold on. You ain't seen nothing yet, buddy. This guy comes prepared i'm telling you man there's nothing going to get by keith and that's why i love him is because he's uh he's always prepared he had four bags of gear and had to and had to go buy a backpack just to make it happen i've seen supermodels travel with less i like i literally looked at you and i went all right well that's that bag right there that's just audio cables and microphones right and then that one's camera gear and then that one over there's got like all kinds of like my laptop and you know hard drives and electronics and, hey. and oh and that last bag over there that's clothes right so i did bring that's a suitcase just, with clothes in it you but, did yeah you did have yeah. clothing did have clothing um so yeah that that's just so you guys know there's a lot of effort that goes into this man no doubt about it and keith keith was ready to go and i'm very very thankful of that um so thanks, buddy. Yeah. That was, uh, but it was well worth me being the mule for, so for that purpose. If you're and, interested and, uh, in being a fuel for any of our uh, mule, sorry, for any of our future uh, road shows. media road shows, uh, you can you mm-hmm. can sign up at partscounterguru.com under the Ask Us a Question tab. Just, <laughs> yes. just send us a note that says like I'll be your mule. <laughs> right. We'll meet you at right. the show. I'll let you. Hey, I'll let you carry my bags. I'll give you a Parts Counter Guru sticker. If, Here, you know. <laughs> here's what you get for that, though. Now, we're, let's go ahead and put this out there. Here's what you get for that. You get into the show. Mm-hmm. That's a big deal. That's true. Yeah. That's a big deal. I mean, and maybe hey, even it's worth beer. care. That's right. If you're part of the media team, guys, just saying. Something to think about. So, anyway, let's let's move All on. Right. Ford. Ford. Yeah, so we, we run across the hall. We get there, and Keith is, you know, Johnny on the spot with his camera gear and everything, and we don't know what's going on. And they're talking about we just all we see are a couple of SUVs. Well, there was an ex- sometimes there was an they'll have a there. black. Uh, we we saw a lot of this. This is real common. They'll have yeah. a black cloth like like the drop, right. and I, you know vehicle cover. Right, that's where I was getting. Okay, is that you had these these other SUVs just sitting around this one center uh, vehicle that was that was about to be revealed, and we had no idea what it was. And look. Keith and I are going in under the assumption that it's got to be Bronco related. It just kind of makes sense. Well, and you we can don't sort know. of tell by looking at it like it's boxy. Yeah, yeah. We, but we, sometimes yeah. that's not it. Like there's a couple that we went to and they had something covered and they didn't get to that till the next day. Right. And you can yeah. you can ask if you can find a, like a Ford rep, but when there's mm-hmm. that many people, it's you're literally just guessing. Like so yeah. so we would split up and Jay would go on that side of the stage and I'd go on this side of the stage and then we're just, just sort of camera hoping. angles, yeah, yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah. And uh you know, all of a sudden, you know, the I, I think it was one of the maybe one of the marketing team of the maybe a, who was the guy that from Ford that was speaking at first? Do you remember oh, the guy's those name? Those guys are all, you know, I, yeah. I don't know. I mean, he was just a he's just a tie in uh, tie in a So coat, you're watching but, him. I'm watching you. And you're him, up yes. kind of in front of him. And I'm mm-hmm. literally crawling around behind the back of this like escape. <laughs> yeah. And I was about to climb on the bumper of the escape to try to get, you know, yeah. uh, a, a higher angle shot. And I looked around and I was like, well, are there any security people that are going to run me off? If, you know, and I, I literally went, oh, that's a security guy right there standing next to Jay Leno. Wait a minute. Right. <laughs> hey, that's yeah, Jay Leno. Jay- he was about five feet from me. Yeah, which is pretty awesome. And all of a sudden, um, you know, Keith and I are using this uh, this software uh, to do the live uh, broadcast for you guys. And uh, all of a sudden, I get this text from Keith that says, you need to get in the room now. I'm standing right next to Jay Leno. It was kind of funny. And I'm over there struggling, trying to get my camera gear set up and everything. But it worked out. And here comes Jay Leno, man. What a cool thing. Yeah. What a cool thing, man. So so he did a um, 
kind of a long story short, Craig Ferguson, another comedian, bought this old yep. jalopy that didn't run, and it was an old 68 Ford Bronco. Mm -hmm. dumped it in Jay Leno's parking spot at NBC Studios and almost as a sort of how, how are you going to get out of this one kind of thing, you know? Right, And right. Leno takes it and he's like, well, he didn't obviously know what he gave me. And so they fully restored it. He put, what did he put in it? Uh, GT it was a uh, GT500. Uh, yeah, just insane. It was like a, yeah, insane, insane. Too fast. But he they went, started went with it the up manual and, trans because he said, you know, yeah. it's a Bronco. You got to do the manual trans. Yeah, and, he was real proud of it. It's uh, a super nice, yeah. super nice Beautiful ride, man. Blue. Very, yeah, very well. Yeah, very well done restoration. You would expect no um, less from him. Absolutely, and of course they teased a little bit about the Ford Bronco, and Jay Leno obviously knows a lot more than the average person about what's about to come out because he kind of teased that a little bit, but didn't didn't get into any great detail. So, kind of remains to be seen. We didn't see anything. Um, there that would indicate what it's going to look like um but they did mention the baja bronco that yes. they just premiered like the weekend before sema yeah which right. i mean that's sort of like the toyota the nascar version of the toyota camry i mean yeah it's gonna look a little bit like it but that's all just one piece of body it's not yeah, it's it's built. Uh, it's a Baja they, racer. they build it. Yeah, well, it's a Baja racer and it's built for the circuit model, so it's not going to look. This is like a. I mean, just like a Camry doesn't look like a Camry on on the track, right? And during, I mean, you, know, you can NASCAR. look at the front end and go, oh, well, it's kind of the same yeah. lines on the you know grill or right. whatever. But, but the rest of it, it's yeah. all the aerodynamics and everything are built to run the track. So, so yeah, so it was kind of a teaser, but it wasn't. Um, but the one thing that we did that we did see a lot of. Um, they were really, you know, Ford was pretty smart about grabbing a, the attention of us folks who love the old Broncos, um, the old body styles. Oh, well, I I saw easily I could, like two dozen Broncos restored at oh, the easy. show. Well, they well they had one whole section if you remember outside where the Roush Racing yep. tent was, and over where the Nitto Tires uh, uh, experience was going on. Which is, that's a whole other thing that we'll we'll talk about. I I was so cool watching those Mustangs and those Raptors run yeah. around that that track and just burning tires and stuff. But but yeah, over in that one section, they must have had I don't know maybe a dozen oh, or more yeah restored Broncos. And then you go that inside, just that one section. there was some in the camping section and everywhere, yeah, they were everywhere. Yeah. So everywhere. again, beautiful again. Um, the the theme clearly is off-roading and outdoors and toyota mm -hmm. what are you guys thinking man uh, yeah i know uh, man yeah so um so you want to talk about the shell events a little bit yeah yeah the shell events were pretty cool because so um, the first one kind of ties into this remember the the first yeah. one hennessy yeah the uh um the hennessy um uh, six by six silverado is a 2019 silverado oh, that's wicked john so john hennessy yeah. John Hennessy showed up and gave his yep. little, you know, surprise appearance, and this is how we did it. And three axles. Mm -hmm. They call it a six by six. Uh, crazy, insane, like just like Jay Leno did with his Bronco. They just got really, really crazy, insane on kind of the build. Uh, really good looking truck. Um, what any like? What are the big takeaways from it that you that you well, I'm trying to find. Yeah, here it is, right here. Wanted to give, got some specification information on it. Um, so they, it's it's known as the Goliath. That's what they call it, and it's um, aptly named for sure. Aptly named. Uh, it, it it's 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 it says it was a um, it got a. Uh, Custom six by six truck truck bed on it, thirty seven inch off road tires, along with twenty inch Hennessy wheels and a four hundred and fifty horsepower engine upgrade. Um, additionally, uh, the other thing that that they announced was, you know, for those of you in the diesel world, you're very familiar with Shell Rotella, the oil, the motor oil, and it's been specifically used for diesel, formulated for diesel engines all these years well they had a major announcement that they are now 
uh, uh, offering uh, Rotella uh, version for gasoline trucks, big trucks now, which is huge, really, because that's a that. That uh, Rotella is the is the desired oil for these big rigs. Well, are, and he said, John, John Hennessy said in his in the press conference, he said there were a couple situations where we were out somewhere doing testing and we didn't we needed oil and we had to do an oil change and we just went to the mm-hmm. like O'Reilly's down the street and got whatever yeah. off the shelf because yeah. it'll work. And it, it did the job yeah. in whatever heat degree heat they were in. And so, yeah, so Shell has made great. I like that. They've made great strides in sort of mm. the capabilities of their oil because, you know, and I have a Cummins generator in my um, in my RV. It's it's a gasoline. It's an unleaded gasoline generator, but it is designed and come and did it this way that you can go use their diesel oil engine oil and put it in there right. and it's in the manual mm-hmm. it's totally acceptable it'll run just fine right so that's a well, what great made that yeah that is and what what made that whole experience that particular uh presser that day for us um not only the reveal of of that pickup truck but we had the opportunity of walking around um the shell Pennzoil rotella um uh, experience there and you we actually were able to talk to scientists yeah and we're and we're going to get into that uh in in, in, a, in a later video for you guys to kind of get a little bit more thorough with what we saw and what we what we know about it and what i know about it and you know its advantages but the experience that they gave us um in the press was red carpet yeah. Um, and we had the ability to be able to bring that stuff to you guys live. And again, you can check that out on our Yeah, on our there's YouTube video channel. out there right now of both these Shell press conferences on our YouTube channel under the live section. And, and I'm really I'm really happy to to see that there's so much interest in that that it's there's been a lot of a uh, lot of views on it. So you hearing that? Yeah. Do yeah. I need to take cover? So you, no, man, they've been flying all morning. It must be uh, must be something going on. I don't know what's up. Okay, so, so anyway. while are you in your email right now? I am. Can yes. you pull open the other shell? Remember the other one that yes, you have, that? man. I I tell you what. Now this for me, ah, right up there with some of the coolest things that I have ever been part of. And anybody who is a car enthusiast knows who Barrett Jackson is. Um, Barrett Jackson, you know they're. They're an auction. They made Scooby Doo um, and uh, oh no, that yeah, was Hanna yeah. Barbera. Sorry, sorry. Right, right. And again, now keep in mind, Keith and I are going to these pressers. We have no idea what what's going to happen. We're just going over to bring, hopefully, bring you guys some really cool information. And in, in, in both of these instances, we were there front row and had an opportunity to to see a couple of really cool reveals and. This particular day, the the on the on the main stage was um, Craig Jackson, who is the CEO of Barrett Jackson. I'm I'm literally you know four feet away from him at that particular moment when he's on stage, and they reveal um, the uh, it's a 1968 fully restored to its original, with one exception, it's the fuel injection. I think was modified. Yeah, there's no way they had fuel injection in '68. Not right. not on a Ford anything it, exactly and so it was a it was a prototype 1968 shelby gt500 green hornet it was fully restored uh, by barrett jackson two made with the help two, only two made um so the green hornet was an important and special vehicle to me this is this is craig jackson uh and adding it to our collection was a no-brainer uh i had a long friendship with uh, carol carol shelby uh, and I believe he would be proud to see one of his revolutionary prototypes looking like it rolled right out of the factory back in 1968. And it really did. And after they left the stage, uh, they went over to the car. Keith was right there. Um, and he talked in depth about what they went through uh, to, to get this thing back fully restored. And, and the, the interesting thing about it was is he was talking about the journey through this whole restoration process of of how as they were you know removing things they were they would find out well this is not the original but then the original was still around and then they were 
pulling numbers and realizing that, oh, this is the original engine, numbers match. I mean, it was a gold mine that they found when they found this car. And again, only two of them. I think the other one's red in color. I think they called it is the Red right? Devil. Yeah. I might Something not be like wrong, that. but yeah, yeah, it was red. Here is the cool thing about this whole thing. They Again, they documented this whole journey of restoration, and there is a documentary that will be out about the Green Hornet Shelby GT500, um, and they showed a clip from that, and we, we videoed that, and it's on our video on our YouTube channel. I highly recommend you go out and check that out. I can't wait for it to come out. He didn't say um, where. They just said some cable channel, right? Yes. He didn't really give the... Um, the whole lowdown, but I tell you what we're going to do is we're going to do our homework yeah. and we'll 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 um we'll put that. Let's see, uh, let's see. Was there anything else that I really wanted to say about that? And it is a one of a kind vehicle, by the way. Uh, I mean, so I I will just tell you that as a vintage Mustang fan, mm. it is that you are. It is one of the best looking vintage mustangs i have ever seen and that includes the eleanor car that chip foose had a hand in for the um gone in 60 seconds remake that got a lot of press this Mm -hmm. thing is an original like that paint color i've never seen a green like that 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 says classic vintage mustang it I, just everything about that car. Go look at the pictures that we've got on it. It is just beautiful, and it is ah, just just knowing yes. that that Carol Shelby would have possibly breathed on that thing is is just wow, you know? Right? Yeah, it's it's incredible. And you know, the more you get into it, and I, I think that you know, we probably could put a little bit of this press information on our website. Yeah. We should put together a little. We'll, we'll write up a put a little write up out there to, to yeah. go on our website and you can click on it and go read it but I'm I'm reading some more of this information and we keep in mind we heard all of this but we're just trying we're working so hard to film it that some of the stuff probably went in one ear and out of the other so we kind of have to to refresh some of the information but we've got all of it and we can certainly answer questions if you have any on that you just go to our website and Click on "Ask Us a Question." We'll certainly be be glad to fulfill, um, uh, you know, your 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 questions. But um, one thing that that I took from this, and it's you know, again, you know, Craig said, Craig Jackson said this on several occasions. He had a really special relationship with Carroll Shelby, and um, to the point that he knew about these cars. He knew about the Green Hornet, but they both just assumed the thing had been put in a crusher somewhere. Um, but they were located, and, and, and this is why it's so special for, for Craig Jackson to, to document it and, and give the information on it because it, it meant a lot to him, not you know, because of his relationship with Carol Shelby. And, and uh, so it's, 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 it's a lot of sentimental. Um, I mean, I, I almost thought that you know, he was really choked up at one point talking about it, I, I think. And i tell you something else that was really cool, and I tapped you on the shoulder while we were there. His wife was standing oh, right yeah. behind me. So hey, so this is this is how I know I'm normal, okay? <laughs> and you are yeah. too. Yeah, yeah. Because she was standing by you. In fact, you were trying to you were trying to give her my spot, right up up against the ropes. Yeah, because she was. Yeah. Go ahead. What was she doing? Well, she. She was trying to get Craig to. She's giving him know, the wrap it up. She was giving, giving him the, the universal wrap it up, wrap it up symbol because they had they had more uh, things to do, and um, it was kind of funny because there was a guy standing next to her that that she she knows. Yeah, and I'm not real sure if he wasn't kind of a. I think he had, might have had a Barrett Jackson badge on, but I think he might have been a person that was like staging the questions to to get crowd interest, maybe. Yeah. And I, I think I saw a little bit of a nudge after he, he asked a question because she's been trying to get him to go because they had to go on to another event that was scheduled. So it was it was not a I mean not a bad when you are literally the the scheduled press event <laughs> right and your job is to stand there with the microphone and talk to the camera and answer questions and your wife's over here going, Hey man, Time to Wrap go. Wrap it up. Let's go. <laughs> and here you got she a car guy. Not, just, yeah. He just wants to talk about his car, right? To anybody that'll nice. listen. Yeah. <laughs> she was super nice. I even looked at her and I said, if you want to, go ahead and get in here. And she says, uh, no, no, no. I got his attention. Thank you. 
So, and it was pretty soon it was wrapped up after that. Well, what a treat, man. I tell you, we, that was just one of the, you know, uh, coolest things um, to see that car up front and close and then to have Craig Jackson um, give us the details in person. I mean, Keith was like a foot away from the man. Yeah. You know, th- during that whole, and, and if you don't believe us, go look at the film, go look at yeah. the video. It's on our, it's on our YouTube channel, man. And it's really cool. It's a, I think it's about a, about a 35 minute yeah. uh, press release. Yeah. Something like not, that. Not it too was long to, to be watch. 20. <laughs> yeah. The, the audio is really good in that one. Um, and keep in mind, we were getting audio off of the PA system that they had in place and it was really good. So I think they, they did a good service to the press that was there. Um, it helps us out to deliver good content and it was really good. I think Keith and I both got some great shots for you. So anyway, enjoy it. We hope you will let us know again if you, if you didn't. All right. So we're at a fork in the road here. We are. Do you want to go Hot Wheels or Nissan? Um, Red pill, blue pill. Hot Wheels, yeah. Nissan. Let's let's get away from the Nissan. Let's go Hot Wheels. All right. So while we were outside, um, Hot Wheels had now now understand when you you get a directory, they're pretty thick, and they've mm-hmm. and they've got an app, and you can search for any anybody that you know is in the industry that you think might be there and Mm -hmm. hot wheels of all people showed up and they probably had one of the biggest booths and i'm doing finger quotes for those of you listening Mm because it was outside and it was like a couple football fields in size i would guess right if you took the whole square footage and they had a drift track and then they Mm -hmm. had all these cars that they had designed that um were they're, replicas they're of the Hot Wheels, right. like the Twin Mill, yeah, and the yeah, 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 yeah. full uh, size replicas. Yes, yeah, it like it's just cool. That car is not Very. supposed to be possible to make, kind of thing, right? Right. And so right. there was, and then they had a judge contest where Leno and Adam Carolla, they had all a celebrity panel of judges coming out to judge some of those some of those builds, but mm-hmm. um, the. The haze of burning rubber that filled that outside <laughs> area and the smell, right, was yeah, just yeah. Because they were taking people in hot laps around the drift track, and just smoking tires, yeah. man. I mean, just smoking tires, and it was nonstop. It was they would run the track. I think they would do in, and that, these are two GT five hundred Mustangs. Actually, there was more than oh, two. They, were they probably doing, had. They were doing trucks. They were doing some Nissans. Yeah. They were doing yeah. But they were ro- they were rotating them out. So right. you would you would do your run. You know they would have two cars running and they and each one had a passenger in each one, which they signed up to be in these things. Man, put their helmets on and held on to their rear ends when they got in. My God, man, that, that's a. Uh, I'm glad that those those people are experienced because I kept waiting for one of them to get loose and, and fly out of there. But those guys know what they're doing. Yeah, here, so. I mean, I yeah, I was sort of thought I'd have some good footage if one of them hooked up and went at the wall. Yeah, there. and that was that was outside. That that was on that was a track, the drifting track on the inside. You know, around the perimeter of that, you had all these full size Hot Wheels replicas to to look at the eye candy there. Um. And we walked around uh, to the backs. I think Bigfoot was, Bigfoot, was there. Uh, Bob Chandler, um, the original creator of Bigfoot, yeah. was there for a little while. And then there yeah. was just you know more off road stuff. We talked to Decked, the uh, yeah the uh, Rachel yeah if yeah you're, they, Rachel if hey Rachel if you're listening yeah um and we've got some video of that uh, that will surface probably in our SEMA recap but um. They make some cool stuff. They've got... I, I don't even know if this is a fair a fair summary for them, but ways to put lots of heavy stuff in the truck bed without using the truck bed space and just basically stacking the deck over your... Yeah, it's, it's an extremely organized, like, yeah. modular systems um, that was... I was very impressed with that, how they... You know, it's just a smart way to use the space that you have, um, but protecting whatever gear that you have, and the, it, whether it be the form of racks or drawers um, uh, or you know cabinets that, that fit in the back or off the side, whatever. They had all these different um, gadgets uh, for you to, um, to 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 review and, and look and see if it met your needs. But the the cool thing was we looked at the rooftop camping racks that they 
that they manufacture, and they um, they have some additional accessories that go along with that. Did we mention rooftop camping today? Yeah, right. I'm not have sure if me- it's come ha- up. Have we have we yeah. mentioned that today? Clearly, that's yeah. okay. not a thing, and nobody Clearly cares about not a thing. it. Yeah, nah, nah. Okay, Nobody's- so let's. I like this game. Let's play it again. Um, would you like to discuss EVs and self driving, or what's behind door number two? Um. So we've we've talked about hot. No, you can't look at the list. You can't. You just gotta. You just gotta pick. What's behind door number okay. two or EVs and self driving? Uh, man, I'm a. I'm a. I want to go behind okay. door number two. That's a good choice. I think yeah. behind door number two is booth babes or models or oh, yeah. okay. Yeah, yeah, so yeah. Booth babes. I just want to see if I'm alone in this. Okay. Um. D- Okay, actually, let me set this up. So if you've never been to SEMA or if you've never been to like a power sports event, a lot of times they bring in these, uh, Nikki Hayden used to call them umbrella dollies, but they're, they're models. They're, they're scantily clad women, it, very pretty, and they're yeah. there to draw your attention. Um, mm-hmm. Do you... Respectful, respectful ladies. Yeah, 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 yeah. This is, so, this is well, a career for them, some, yes. Some, some, sometimes they don't get treated that way, but uh, unfortunately... But they're very respectful ladies. Do you remember of the ones that we saw? Mm-hmm. Can you even remember what? Can you remember one manufacturer or the booth or whose booth it was? Like, do, can you recall any detail other than that model standing there in the booth? Well, there's only one that actually does come to mind. It's only because we got the autograph for okay. For, well, that's Ken. yeah. But yeah. outside of that, but no. No, no, man, no. I'm not. No, and I'm, see, I'm with you. I, I that's get you. my point. Is you put these these very attractive women in front of me, I'm not going to see the forest through the trees. I, you, <laughs> that's all I can see, <laughs> and I could not even tell you who some of these booths were that they hired and paid. I don't even know what for these models right. to stand there for three days. And so well, you have the, to kind of wonder what the logic is there. Well, remember the last the last booth we went by because um, I wanted to get a picture with them. Um, oh right. I just know. I just I, I don't. I know that they were selling wheels. I yeah. think. I mean, I. Well, that narrows but, it down. <laughs> yeah, I mean, but what brand? I, I, I couldn't. Yeah, there tell ain't you. nobody selling wheels at SEMA, right? <laughs> Right. Oh, that's a whole other topic, too, man. My goodness. So, yeah. Oh, no. So, now, there's a little bit of an element of, hey, look at how much money we can spend at SEMA, don't you think? Like, some of that oh. going on? Yeah. I mean, it's excess in some degrees, I think, when you when you look at some of that stuff. And some of the booths are just over the top. Um, I can't imagine what some of those displays cost those people. Just the displays, let alone the labor that it costs to set all that stuff up as well as the space that you have to rent to put that stuff in. Yeah. And then on then on top of that, you've got hotels, food, transportation, uh airfare. I mean, my goodness, the amount of money that's 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 spent uh coming to the show. It's just incredible. It's well done though. I mean, it it certainly is a certainly is a a a, a, a thing to see. Uh, and enjoy, man. Trust me, you need to have all of the days that they allot. And, this is like going to Disney and World. And rest man. assured that if there was ever a flood in that convention center, there were plenty of personal flotation devices not to worry. <laughs> I feel you, brother. Yes, there were. Um, okay, so <laughs> here's something I did not see a lot of, and this is really surprising to me. Um, I counted one Tesla in the entire show, mm-hmm. and that was in a booth right. showcasing garage equipment. So it wasn't even right. really there because and, it was a Tesla. It was just... And it was not a factory paint job. It was almost as if it yeah. was intended to be disguised. Um, but we know Teslas, what they look like, and, and so yeah, I spotted yeah, there it, it right is, off. Right. And, so, and it was yeah. actually in somebody that we had partnered with and we're doing a a podcast at their apex booth but okay so explain to the logic to me of that because okay we know this isn't going away ford has invested in 
hundreds of thousands of dollars in Rivian. Mm -hmm. GM has said that, hey, over the next five years, somewhere between 10 and 20 vehicles in our product line are going to be EVs, electric vehicles. Mm -hmm. Uh, Mm -hmm. Then, of course, you got Tesla, the the big one in the room. You've got uh, bikes. You've got, I mean, there's no end to sort of where this is going. You've got people talking about, you know, Tesla's talking Mm -hmm. about doing a truck, and you've got... Mm-hmm. You know, UPS and these companies do. Okay. So clearly this is a thing. Why mm-hmm. is there no representation at the world's largest automotive show yeah. for electric vehicles? Love them well, or hate them. It's a segment of the market, right? Yeah. Yeah. It's a, it's a, I mean, SEMA is a repair market. It, it is a sector of the repair industry. Um, you know, the name itself. I mean, Traxxas, Traxxas, the RC, remote yeah. control car company out of Texas, yeah. which, mm-hmm. which I've owned some of their stuff and it's cool stuff. They spent, yeah. I don't know how much to put that big booth up where they were running cars around fake rocks and trails and all that. Mm-hmm. If mm-hmm. Traxxas can show up, yeah, no, no EVs? Right. It's, it's interesting, isn't it? What? I mean, there, there may have been one here or there somewhere but i mean you were hard pressed to find any evs at, at all there um and, and, and when you say that not even a motorcycle or anything like nothing no 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 nothing not a bike nothing um so i i found that odd too but i kind of know um you know the industry and how that works is is that if you're an exhibitor um you know you have to kind of sign up and get on a list to get in there a lot of your EV manufacturers, the ones that are, are making headway these days, like a like a Rivian and and um, you know, say a Tesla or whatever, um, they may not, you know, be getting in there yet, or or or, or is it some something being suppressed oh, because of the okay. direction the market's going? Is it could it be a could it essentially be a um, you know if if they bring the EV world in? Are they essentially slapping the hand of the, um, uh, you well, know, of the repair industry? I mean, if you, you know, think, think about, about that, like Ford and GM, who mm-hmm. both had major booths. Yeah. If you even want to call Dodge them booths, well. they Mopar. were stages, right? Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Yep. That they had zero. Right. No reference to it. Nothing. Mm-hmm. Nope. Nope. That's crazy. And it is crazy. And I had a conversation with someone in a booth about what we're doing now and talk to them about you know pay attention to the ev market because you know it's 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 here and it's it's coming a lot quicker than than you realize and these are this is an individual that's in the um, engine rebuilding side of the business so you know you kind of got to think about that that this is a you know for example apex is the automotive aftermarket product exchange which you know it's in the rebuilding market you know engine components and those sorts of things and and the one thing that i guess you don't want to really upset the apple cart by bringing in a bunch of evs when your repair industry is so huge at the present time it may not set well I, you know that's just, that's just the um that's kind of the impression i i got and would take on it what what is that your thought too? I or? love I loves me a good conspiracy, so I'm going to go with you on this. So yeah, it's, I, think, I, think, I think I think I mean we've it, just uncovered the SEMA conspiracy here uh, live on the <laughs> yeah. uh, Parts Counter Guru podcast. Well, you know, here's the thing: it's kind of very similar to like what we were talking about with the UAW strike. Um, you know, EVs are right at the center of that argument. They're right at the center of the agreements, and you know, GM just sold the Lordstown plant to a local. That happened. Uh, what was announced? EV earlier this week. Like yeah, earlier this week. So, folks, EVs, man, but they weren't at SEMA, and they won't be at they won't be at PRI either. All right, so the performance yeah. racing industry. So there you All go. Right. No EVs, guys. So I've got, not, a, not a one. I've got. Um, well, I've got one other thing that I'm real hot and heavy on. But before we leave this whole EV self drive, so I did a. You and I were trying to do this all week. And mm-hmm. it was a little bit tricky. Like, we were literally trying to recreate... Okay, okay, so Lyft, Lyft, the rideshare company Lyft, L-Y-F-T, right? Yep. Has yep. In, their, um, in their arsenal at Las Vegas, in their fleet, 
self-driving mm-hmm. vehicles. Okay. Yep. And when you're sometimes like, because we were literally having to travel sometimes halfway across the strip to get to the convention center and then back to the other show and then back and forth. And sometimes it's just a time thing. Like it was easier to just do the ride share than take a yeah. shuttle or monorail or whatever. And so I would pull up in the Lyft app and it would say like, there's a self-driving vehicle available. Would you, would you like to take it? And, and literally by the time I would like read that and then go, Hey Jay, do we want to take a self-driving vehicle? And he'd go, yeah, why not? And then I'd come back and it'd be gone. Right. So then we started doing this thing where we were like, okay, well, where were we standing? In what hotel? What casino are we in? Oh, are we on the north entrance or the main entrance? Let's go stand back in the same spot, right? What time of day was it? Was it, it was three o'clock right. in the afternoon. Okay, well, let's make sure at three o'clock in the afternoon on, you know, <laughs> we're over at the north entrance. Let's try. And it got crazy and it, we could never do it. And then literally when, when it was time to separate and, you know, kind of head home, I pulled the thing open and I went to book and it said, do you want a self-driving? And I went... Oh, hell yes. And I tapped it because <laughs> all I cared about was just getting video on this. Okay. So, yeah, I had gone to catch my shuttle to the, uh, so I'm standing out in front of the hotel. Yeah. I had gone to catch the shuttle. So to catch the shuttle, I'm on one side of the hotel and he's over here. They have a different location to pick up, to get picked up for self-driving yep. or other shuttles. Yep. Um, so I was standing out there to catch the shuttle and I, I get a text, uh, yeah. I get a text from you and you said, I've summoned a yeah. self-driving car. And I'm like, darn man, I wanted to be involved. And then but, I drove right past so. you and you never knew it because they had me trapped nope. in this thing and I couldn't roll the windows down. And I was literally like banging <laughs> on the window and I don't, yeah. So I'm going to say two, two things about this. We're going to, I'm, we're going to put a video on our website and I'm going to do, I've documented my experience Okay, go just keep watching partscounterguru.com for that. And the other thing I want to say is it is not at all what you think. It is not at all what you think you have. I guarantee you, if you're listening to this podcast or you're watching on YouTube right now, you have this picture in your head of what that was and what that experience was. And I'm going to tell you right now, you are nowhere near the reality no. on that. So no. I'll lay it out for you. We'll talk about it. We're going to do that in a video segment on the website. Um, but for now, let's get back to, like, can we do the Nissan thing and maybe wrap it up with that? Yeah, I think that, yeah, that, but um, we've got a couple of, th- one thing. Okay. Our discovery. We won't, let's, let's, let's wrap up with the Nissan thing. Okay. Um, but let's talk about what we found out about some, this is called diversification. Okay. People recognizing the market around them and opportunities to sell more product. And Keith and I were in Apex, and we're walking through the hall, and we've got our own uniform shirts on, made by this manufacturer. Oh, right. Dickies. Yeah. Yeah, we're wearing Dickies Dickies work shirts. They're not paying us to do it, but those are our – because those are popular in the, you know, automotive industry. And we were like, well, that's – you know, why not, right? Yeah, and being in the industry, I know – yeah. I know who's making yeah. what, you know, and I've known this for years. So I, I'm looking over at the booth and I'm like, yeah, let's go see Dickies. And I'm like, well, wait a minute. Are those seat covers? Right. Heck yeah. So I, we walk into the booth and we talk to the to the uh, rep there. And I said, man, you know, am I missing something? But y- you guys... How long have you been doing this? Because I've never known Dickies to sell seat covers. He goes, "Yeah, we just got into it." I'm like, well, wow. I mean, okay. the logic being, look, if Dickies is tough enough to be a mechanic work shirt, they ought to be tough it, enough it, to cover it, the car seat of the car he's working on, right? Completely makes sense, and they're going to ride on that reputation of having durable, durable wear, yeah, durable clothing, yeah. mechanics wear, whatever, um, uniforms. Makes sense because you put a Dickies tag on a seat cover, man. It's probably going to last you a while. So we, as we were peeling back the layers of what these guys are doing now, what was it? They had steering wheel covers. Um, I think they had uh, like like sh- window shades. They were getting into the accessory side yeah. of the business, and and it again it it's diversification. But it's opportunity, and I think that somebody within their marketing team realized, you know, this is not a bad idea because it, it would be like Harley Davidson. Same thing as Harley Davidson. Yes, they have the bikes. We know they got. Yeah, you know, but we know what their bikes. Everybody are. wants a T-shirt. 
But everybody wants a T-shirt, man. Everybody wants a pair of boots with a Harley Davidson so, tag on the side. Dickies, if of it, you're you know? listening, and actually we have your contact info, but uh, I would be willing to put your seat cover on my FJ and go head to head with the existing Weta Cole seat cover that I've got. If you want to, right? If you want right. to throw down, and we'll see, we'll do a video on that for you. So I'm just saying, yeah. you know. Yeah, I could use put your money where your mouth too, is. So. Then uh, you know we'll see how good you are. Um, Absolutely. Okay. Yeah. So that was kind of a nice surprise. There was quite a few nice surprises that turned into pretty cool uh, discoveries for us in terms of videos and topics that we have wanted to talk about, and we have found mm-hmm. people that ha- are making products now that are like innovative. And we're like, oh, yes. this is going to fit right in with kind of what we're, yeah. And and we'll say we're we're not going to talk about those items today because we're going to have a future well, podcast. You come back. I got hopefully... to get you to come back and watch for some reason, right? It, it, exactly. There's going to be some video on it, but we're hoping to have some of these folks on our podcast with us to talk about their products. Yeah. Um, and I'm, you know, and beta beta tools being one. Um, we podcasted live from there. Um, we. Probably about an hour's worth of, of uh, not quite yeah. an hour, maybe about 40 a forty-five minute, minute yeah. podcast. Yeah, forty-minute podcast. But that's a beta tools, man. I love what they're doing. Um, I love those guys. We had such a great time. We really appreciate them allowing us to be in their booth there at Apex um, to wrap that last day of the show up for them. Um, but we had a great conversation, and I, I believe that uh, we'll have more conversations because we want to. I want to highlight. Uh, their 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 modular toolbox system. You bought one, yeah. And we should probably do a piece on that. Yeah. Um, I might as well just do that it, from my RV because it's in the garage in my RV, and that's kind of where it lives. So. so it was it was Todd and um, uh, Peter, Peter. Yeah. And uh, Peter was with us at the booth, uh, you know, on in Apex. Um, knows everything about uh, that product for obvious reasons, um, but was very welcoming to us, and we really appreciate the opportunity, and we look forward to working with those guys again. So hopefully we can bring some more yeah. information on those guys. So uh, Okay, so, so Nissan, all right? Yeah, boy, yes, sir. <laughs> uh, this, was, this was funny. I mean, how it's how did it how did this start? So we go to the Nissan booth, well, right? Well, okay, so I'm a former... 370Z yes. owner, and probably won't be my a... last. That car, actually, you picked out for me because uh. I went, hey, man, I'm torn between this BMW 3 Series with a r- convertible hardtop mm-hmm. and this basically cl- as close to a Nismo package 370 Roadster, which is what Nissan calls their convertible. As I, and I'm like, repeat? I said repeat that? Went, is that? Did you say B- Nismo? BMW 3 Series or... A, or Nissan 370Z Roadster convertible, yeah, with the you know synchro and I, rev and all that, and I and I was like, I think I've got them priced about the same, you know, like they're basically comparable price points. I think I went like, uh, duh. <laughs> and I was like, all right, you're gonna go Nissan, huh? I mean, really over German engineering? <laughs> no regrets. Yeah. So, um, so they were wearing these company issued and it's almost a throwback to steve mcqueen they're they're like a retro 370z yeah, yeah. with the two racing stripes on it from like he wore in the 24 hour hey, yeah yeah anybody working for nissan marketing team keith wants yeah. one and i want one we will pay they're, you for they're it. nice yeah so yeah. we just like i just went up and said hey you know what's up because they that office is basically in my backyard like i live in the same mm-hmm. town that nissan national north american headquarters okay so they were like, yeah, sorry, no, but uh, we'll, we'll, we'll answer any questions you've got about anything you see here. And so we're looking around, you know, and they've got the Time Attack 370, and then they've got this thing over here, and it's a, it's a Titan XD Dually. It's their mm-hmm. full-size pickup truck. And I yeah. said, because uh, I'm a towing guy, I'm an RV guy, I've got a Ford three-quarter ton V10, and I said... Uh, what uh, what weight class is that? Is that a half ton or three quarter? And they went, uh, let's uh, it's in between. <laughs> I was like, well, that's marketing if I've ever heard it. Like it's in between, right? It's a tweener. And then yeah. this guy comes up and he goes, hey, what? Do, I'll take. What do you want to know? Come with me, right? And I'm not gonna say his name, 
basically was one of the guys that was part of the design team that built that sucker. Mm -hmm. And we did a whole, there's an article, there's a write up on our website. You can read all about this truck. It's, it's mind blowing what Nissan did and then decided to just basically make it go away. And which I don't, yeah, it's, it's, it's hard for me to understand why that would have occurred. We're, and we're scratching our heads on that one. And here's why too, because we were not the only two individuals that were sitting there just Googling over this thing, man, going, Whoa, okay, man, so I mean, what's let's it? book in this, right? So yeah, what did we see at the show that took up maybe 50% of the floor space? Was it here? I'll give you, let's, you want to do some multiple choice? Let's do some multiple choice let's, here. Yeah, let's do multiple okay, choice. Here, yeah, let me yeah. get some, uh, let me get some theme music. Uh, okay. So here option number one, Ferraris, Lamborghinis, and Aston Martins, or option number two, Jeeps, trucks with lift kits, and Overland camping rigs. Which one of those I, did we see m- at SEMA? Yep, and I know what the answer is. You ready for me yeah, to give it please. to you? Option number two. Jeeps, trucks with lift kits, trucks, yep. off-road, overland. Trucks. Okay. So did, did we mention Jeeps and trucks and, and overland so, and... Off road. Nissan yeah. builds, and it was, to my knowledge, the only 4x4 that they brought to the show. They had a Nismo Kicks and they had some other stuff, but four wheel drive off road, Titan XD, Dually, the only Titan Dually in existence, to my knowledge. And it's the one vehicle that everybody's like, ooh, this fits the, you know, the theme of the show and it's cool looking. And it's, mm-hmm. and mm-hmm. then they, like the week before, they pulled all the press on it. They basically killed the project, yeah, and said nothing. No, just but yeah, go ahead and you know, you know, take the truck to the show and put it on the floor. But you know, my bad. Like we're we're just not you know. I, yeah. oh it made it made no sense. It made no sense whatsoever because it was a big, it was a big talking point for for that booth. I mean, everybody was yeah. hovering around this, and they thing. were and they were I sort mean, of just, like like the Nissan employees, I mean, the running product a video specialists. On it. Oh yeah. Yeah, video playing yeah, behind it. They had a it. looping video back about and it, the, and you know, how, the product specialists were like, uh, "Yeah, it's an it's the Titan XD." Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. Hey, oh, does that have a Cummins diesel in it? Uh, yeah, yeah. We're not doing those anymore, though. <laughs> uh, okay. Well, you guys clearly are focused in on what's in demand. Have you have you guys walked the halls of this show, just out of curiosity right. to see, you know. Yeah, they they dropped. I my, I'm the I'm of the opinion they dropped the ball on that one, man. Well, now grant now granted they did have some you know uh, some other you know nice looking vehicles in, in oh, there. Oh, for sure. But again, but the crowd like the red meat that seemed to be mm-hmm. you know appealing to the crowd was trucks, four by fours, off overland crowd, off roading. I mean that that's, particular truck. Yeah. That particular truck fit right in with what was going on at the show, and they just said, and they just said, nope. So we can't even get into all the details of it, but there is an article on partscounterguru.com on that truck. There's pictures of it. There's proof that Mm -hmm. we were there, Um, and we go into a little bit of the story and link to the video. That's the production video and all that. So if you want to see all that, right. Go go check it out on our website. I'm reminded. Sorry, I paused there for just a minute because I've got a great quote that I think I'm going to end the show with. It's an Albert Einstein quote that just it just seems to fit this whole situation. But you know, I'll say yeah. yeah. So I I can't wait for that. uh, Yeah, yeah. yeah. So um, do you want to? I guess it's time to. So I guess do you want to talk about the drawing and the giveaway and? Yeah, I, we can. But there's one other one other topic that that we need to bring up though that we we haven't touched on today. And that is the influence of, of Asian manufacturers um, in in the buildings. And when I say buildings, I'm talking both Apex and SEMA. Yeah. Um, they're, uh, you know, the biggest influence that you have is, uh, you know, from that side of the business, the engine repair business is, is a lot of lot of Asian companies. And when why I would that? Say why Asia, is that, Jay? It's because of the cost is so you know so much less to, to produce the product. So what you're saying uh, is that 
the product is produced there because it costs less. How much of the product mm-hmm. is produced there? Oh God, man, you you've got to, you know, I'm going to say around sixty to seventy. I was going to go like three percent. You think it's you think it's more than three? <laughs> Are you kidding me? Your response was all I needed, buddy. Like that was yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Are you kidding me? Right. So um, people no, literally I, traveled halfway around the world. Some of them to uh, to participate in the show. Yeah, yeah, they did. And I mean, these are folks that have been, and we're not talking about just China. I mean, you're talking uh, Taiwan, Japan, uh, South Korea, um, also China, uh, and, you know, Indonesia, uh, India is represented well there. Um, Those are your big players in the engine uh, component um, uh, manufacturing side of the business. So, it, it's it for me it wasn't odd because I you know Keith and I it was his first time um, in the show at that level um, so he got to see it firsthand of the influence um, I mean and understand uh, go thirty ahead. well it depends on whether it was SEMA or Apex but at least thirty yeah. percent yeah. of the crowd that I saw both exhibitors and foot traffic at least thirty percent yeah were were well. Asian. Oh, for sure, for for sure. And then over at Apex, it's more it's than that. Yeah, much. So more they've than got that. a and pretty big chunk of the manufacturing of this industry, right? And right. If yeah. that, it doesn't, if that doesn't tell you like they deem it worthwhile to travel literally halfway around the world for this show. I don't know what else will. Right. Right. And you know there are there are a lot of other shows in the automotive aftermarket repair industry or and manufacturing side um you know there is a show that's um held in various locations globally called auto mechanica yeah um they hold a show there annually in dubai um they're in germany um south america uh, mexico and asia um so there's the you know it's it's a big deal but yeah, it's um, it's it's growing uh, as far as the number of manufacturers coming out of Asia, um, and but what I do know, uh, you know, from traveling over there myself, uh, being part of that industry, and, and back in the day when we were qualifying suppliers, um, you know, a lot of the reason is too is that the cost of these things can be lower because they're not dealing with a lot of the EPA regulations that that we deal with here in the States. Um, uh, supplies are a lot cheaper. Labor is the biggest saver, cost saver. Um, but that's changing. Uh, the landscape has changed quite a bit now. And, you know, China has come up with some sort of an EPA for, for themselves. And, and gosh, they need it. Um, uh, the pollution in that country is horrible. Um, so, anyway, that's that was just something that we... We made note of, and we wanted to make a mention of, yeah. is that the influence, the influence is, is there. So, just pay attention to that sort of stuff. So. I want to talk about free yeah. stuff. Free stuff, man. We got so, it. So, um, uh, we we have some pretty cool uh, various swag items to give away. Some of it's going to be mm-hmm. automotive based. Uh, some of it's apparel. Yeah. Um, Gadgetry, but, apparel. Uh, yeah. For this next one, to qualify for that, and if you've made it this far, thank you for listening. Uh, you know, all hour and change into the to the show. Uh, leave a comment on our YouTube channel on this particular episode of the mm-hmm. Counter Show on YouTube, which is number thirty eight. Thirty eight. Thirty eight. Thirty eight. Wow. Um, Leave a comment, leave a constructive comment, and we will draw from one of those comments at random for for a drawing for a prize giveaway. So we'll give now that a couple weeks. Tell them what weeks. they have to do, though. You have to leave a comment to, on YouTube. Right, but for us to reach well, them, Well, no, they if have you leave public. a comment, then it's you don't have to have a public. Oh, that's right. If that's, that's, we're, yeah. we're working our, that's what you're telling me. You're working our way around yep. that. Oh, good. See? See? This is Keith. This is why I hired you, man. <laughs> Yep, this is exactly why I hired you. Uh, you're, you're always forward thinking, man. Ways to, I'm always finding ways to hack things. Okay. So, yeah, yeah, um, yeah. yeah. So just leave a comment on this video, and then we will go a couple videos down the road from now. Mm-hmm. Give you time. Give some t- time for some comments to pile up, and then we'll go back and pick one of the one of the comments. Go to YouTube while you're there. 
ring the bell, give us a thumbs mm-hmm. up. If you didn't like it, how about you tell us why? Go to go to go to partscounterguru.com and ask us a question, leave us a comment, tell us what you'd like to see, or you can leave a right. comment in the channel and that's fine too. Um, how about be nice. Yeah, be like nice. Patrick Swayze nice. and Roadhouse said, be nice. Yeah. Yeah. Life lessons from that movie, yeah. more more than you realize. <laughs> Absolutely. Do uh, you want to do the rest of our social locations and all that? Yeah. So, you know, you guys can go right to our website, which is uh, partscountergurus.com. And um, from there, man, you can navigate to a, a, a lot of different things. Uh, first and foremost is uh, um, <laughs> our podcast. What? Uh, what podcast links i should say what are you you still eating that yeah, chocolate sitting right here in front of me i know man i tell you what anyway so you can uh, go up to the top left hand side of the uh, the website page there and uh, just navigate to the uh, uh the menu drop down menu and choose podcast links and choose your platform we are on uh, stitcher spotify um we are on apple podcast uh or itunes whatever you want to call it. it's apple podcast we're on google play google podcast um uh, tune in um i said in tune the last time didn't i that was funny but it's tune in i think i don't even try but anymore on, i just tell them to go to the website yeah, and click on the yeah, podcast links and exactly and just click on the link and you're good just choose your platform um but we're also over on youtube as, as, as keith mentioned um we uh we need your help there uh, l- when you watch any of these videos, please make sure you subscribe, ring the bell, give us a thumbs up again. And then we're also, uh, you can follow us on um, uh, Instagram. Uh, on Instagram, you go to Instagram.com. Uh, we are forward slash the parts counter gurus. You can follow us on Facebook. Um, we are facebook.com forward slash parts counter gurus. So, and if you, if you like us on those and follow us on either of those, we are fairly regular, uh, with content on those, uh, giving you little snippets of what might be coming down the pike or something that we found that we want to share with you. And and it could be an an article that we read that we're just going to, you know, pass along to you. Uh, could be an image of something that we, you know, thought was relevant to, to something, um, or uh, links to some videos that we just released or articles that we just put out on our website. So, and then we also have on our website, anytime we mention certain things that are for purchase, uh, we will put that under the uh, mentioned on the podcast tab. Um, you can uh, follow that link and go purchase that, and typically that's going to be through um, Amazon. Um, and we also have a handy little uh, Amazon uh, icon up at the top right-hand corner of our page, uh, and you can click on that and go over to Amazon. You'll sign into your account, and if you purchase anything, you put anything in your shopping cart, and you purchase that within 24 hours, it helps us out. And we can't see who you are. Uh, we don't know that you've bought, you know, pink underwear or, or you know, for yourself or, or blue underwear or, you know, or if you like that fuzzy stuff, man. I don't know. Some people like it against their skin. It's, I mean, yeah. I, you know, not me. But to each their own. I'm it's not real big on that. It's completely anonymous. Absolutely it is. So, um and that's really about it. I mean, I've given the rundown on where you can go. Nice job. You know, we just well, thanks, uh, while man. you were while you were doing that, I went to Amazon and looked to see if Olive and Sinclair chocolate was available on Amazon. Sadly, it's not. Ooh. Uh, but what about that but beer? Maybe uh, at you can't, Whole they can't, Foods. They don't sell. I don't know. Which is owned by Amazon. Yeah. yeah. So Whole Foods would. Well, we yeah. can, Anyway, we'll we'll look well, into that. W- well, what about this? If, if you can't buy it on Amazon, we can maybe at least give a link to where they can buy it. Yeah. I'll figure something you know. out. It's really you good stuff you know. if you're into... Yeah. Well, I wouldn't know because <laughs> I don't have any. Um, it's the time of the year to ship it because it's you know cold enough out that it won't melt in transit. <clears throat> you know what? This is a funny thing. That, uh, you know, and you, you'll appreciate this. Um, you're colder today than I am. Yeah. Yeah, it's pretty chilly here. Yep. 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 That's why I like where I live. A bunch man. of RVers freaking out because uh, they haven't winter vi- winterized their... This is... Uh, <laughs> we always take a Thanksgiving trip every year in the RV, 
And uh, mm-hmm. this is the first time since I've, in my adult life, since I've owned the RV, meaning not, you know, with my family, that I've had right. to winterize my RV before that Thanksgiving trip. Oh, wow. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Yeah, you saw it coming, didn't you? You guys got a big well, Arctic blast. That was, yeah, uh, yeah. When we were at SEMA, I looked at the weather forecast, and I called my wife, and I went, uh, hey, go go turn the furnace on in the RV because uh, I don't want the pipes to freeze, and then I'll winterize it when I get, get home. Yeah, you guys went from, like, 70 degrees down to, to like, what? Teens. Yeah. That's insane. That's a... Uh. That's a that's a dramatic yeah. change, you know. For us, for us here, it's it's pretty modern. But I, you know, it's you know, we and don't I go, we don't go down that far. Quick, I took my so. uh, rig in for a. There's a air conditioner unit that's getting replaced under warranty, but they called me yesterday yeah. in a panic, going, "Hey, have you winterized this thing yet?" And I went, "Yeah, I did it. I did it before I brought yeah. it to you because, uh, yeah, not, homie, don't play that." Uh, <laughs> <laughs> so hey, real quick yeah. before uh, we end this thing, I just want to say we've got a lot of exciting things coming down the pike. So please stay tuned, guys. Um, we've got some 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 interviews, some some guests that we're going to have on, and we're going to leave it at that. And uh, it's going to be fun. I can't wait. Um, so just just stay tuned in, guys. Okay. So uh, you know, right. look if if it's posting pictures of models from the show to get likes and clicks, then I guess I'll resort to that. Whatever, man. Hey, man, do whatever you have to do, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah, we'll dance for likes. I don't know. Uh, all right, is that is, are we good? Is that a wrap? We're good, man. Okay. Yeah, that's a wrap. All right, everybody, thanks for listening. Uh, remember, tell a friend. Uh, that's that's a big help to us as well. Until next time, which will be very soon. That is Jay over there. I am Keith. And uh, here's your Albert Einstein quote. Um, I'm looking at you, Nissan and Toyota. The difference between stupidity and genius is that genius has its limits. Ah, <laughs> All right. Very good. Thanks for li- care, watching everybody. and listening, everybody. We'll see you next time. Take care. Doing a freaking podcast. I only have so many hands. Calm down, people.